This is a truthful video of what I have achieved and therefore who I really am. In July of 1947, I, after reviewing Enrico Fermi's great work, um, I analyzed and thought perhaps there was a way of obtaining hydrogen fusion energy. And I put together, albeit a freshman type uh, science paper, but it was valid of a H-bomb. And I suggested a secret meeting at the University of Rochester at their cyclotron building and insisted of its validity and it was agreed upon. And then I strongly suggested we begin a super Manhattan project. Therefore, um, overnight, so to speak, I was at the top uh, of what was doing. And uh, then I uh, progressed from there into various uh, suggestions, uh, analyzing and uh, suggesting. Then I uh, uh, predicted that Truman would win. And uh, Jericho Hoover, that immoral, prejudiced uh, bum, uh, he uh, said that Dewey would win. And uh, when Truman won, uh, then it emphasized what I would say, a baseball term, I'm batting a thousand, meaning that I was uh, doing correct on each issue. So he decided that in this pyramid of secret power in the U.S. Uh, of course, Hoover had himself at the point of this power that I would circle on the outside. I'm an insider, but on the outside, suggesting on whatever occurred. And that's the way we progressed. But I had insisted we had to centralize our agencies because I didn't think that immoral, I call him a queer Hoover, on, it, on morality grounds should have that position. And I realized everything you said would go back to him. So I was therefore at the top, but yet uh, the paradox, and it became a, a vicious, actually developed into a life and death struggle of uh, a personality clash. And um, therefore we obtained a CIA. Now, uh, from there, I, uh, Hoover figured he forced me to be in his racket. It's the best I can say of that. Uh, instead of working in science like I should be and studying towards a formal degree, but um, obvious that uh, mathematical physics, I could analyze it, it's clear and correct and even delve into advanced concepts in theoretical mathematical physics. And so I continued privately with my own studies, uh, analyzing uh, Einstein's opinions. And I came to the conclusion that in uh, uh, theology, he didn't really know what he was talking about. In cosmology, although they gave him a lot of hoopla, he didn't really know cosmology. They had to give him crash courses. I repeat with emphasis, they had to give him crash courses to explain that it wasn't just the Milky Way, there were other galaxies, a tremendous expansion of the universe, uh, and, uh, and some of the functions of it. Now, in his mathematical physics, uh, he said that in order to get the, the correct answer, you have to think irrationally and use a mathematical schema. Now, you think about that. Rational man has to think irrationally and substitute a mathematical schema for reality in order to get the, the best answer. So this rational man went at it that we had to go by what was really in this universe, composed of it, and how it functions and represented by real uh, mathematical physics, not some schema of substituting and decreeing that light has to be the ulti ultimate velocity. Uh, who gave uh, the authority of Einstein to decree that ultimate 
has the ultimate velocity has to be light. You understand? So therefore, I came to a conclusion to modernize the Lorentz Einstein transformation equations. And then it was finally after a year of really trying, because I wanted to get out of that criminally insane Hoover racket and work in mathematical physics. So finally, I let the phone call go through. What I can confer with Einstein it really turned out to be a one-on-one -on -one showdown uh, as to who would agree with who. And he did agree with yours truly in that I modernized the Lorentz Einstein transformation equation in future years. It would, I, in my opinion, I said CERN would prove that there were particles that could be accelerated, uh, uh, an increment at least, greater than the velocity of light. And therefore, I put forward capital X prime use capital X minus VT over the square root of 1 minus V squared over capital C squared, where capital C equals 2 or greater than the velocity of light. And he said, are you sure? I said, oh, I'm sure, I'm sure. Theoretically, at least, I've broken the light barrier. He says, like when? I said, well, I think maybe by 1975. This is April 1955 when I conferred with him. I think by uh, 1975, they don't announce it now, but eventually they will have particles in per my finite particle theory, where if you take his book of relativity, as I explained, and you hit it with a photon, Compton had proved has momentum sufficient and what his book of relativity would fall. Put it perfectly on a balanced on the point of a fulcrum, and it doesn't fall. And you set it, it does fall, excuse me. Then you put it put it perfectly on the point of a fulcrum again, and it does fall. You don't see anything, detect anything. That's because in my finite particle theory, where uh, in my rho prime equals m prime v prime r to his rho equals m v r, put r to unity. Future years when my rho prime equals his rho. For my finite particle theory is m becomes decreases towards the infinitesimal particle, and the, the row primes uh, the row prime e is equal to the uh, row, then the velo my velocity has to be greater. And then he actually then took his name off of the Lorentz because I would say the Lorentz Einstein because it was Lorentz's transformation equation. Then he would say, well, it's really Lorentz's transformation equation. So now. Uh, Hoover realizes that uh, I'm still batting a thousand, and therefore I became actually the top analyst and suggest what was best. And that for Hoover was most important, especially when I predicted Truman would win, is that who would be president because that was the only person I could fire the immoral, incompetent, m injurious, murderous, truly insane Hoover. Because you have to realize he was the power behind having uh, uh, Kennedy, uh, President Kennedy, assassinated. That's a polite word of murder. And I was actually there talking to Bobby at the Ambassador Hotel because I knew the, how bad Hoover was. He would not get fired. First thing Bobby would do is fire him. And so I told him not once, twice, to stick the itinerary. But Hoover had somebody talk him to going in the opposite direction. Well, waiting at the presidential suite, going the opposite direction through the commercial kitchen, and Bobby was cut down. Absolute true facts. Put this on a boisterous analyzer, take a polygraph test on the editor's desk, pay for it, but you must print the results. They don't dare. They have me as an anonymous who, uh, well, they can say I'm whatever they want me to be because that's what they want me to, to be. They don't want to admit that they stole in my work. Specifically what? Well, we had to copy coded messages. So I would work East McCoda Experimental Development Lab, and it had to be a better way than the old mimeograph machine. So I put forward Xerox, X E R O X, is my original work. Absolutely. Challenge anybody, anytime. And they took it away from me. The Brit intelligence working with that queer Hoover, they became ranked Xerox in England and Xerox uh, here. Well, then, uh, now. Uh, they uh, then said, well, uh, as far as uh, uh, space uh, uh, projects, and I said, well, I think I can put it forward. And, oh, they got Von Braun. They got that Nazi. And I said, I'm not going to work with a Nazi. He says, well, you're out. And I'm looking for an excuse. I said, well, okay, then I'm out. So I'm now uh, really outside <laughs> of this pyramid of power. 
And uh, in my opinion, I, I uh, then actually the, the Russians beat them, and they beat them doing it the way I was going to do it. What a coincidence. So now they, they, they what, what we're going to do, it came to me almost like tears in their eyes, you know, I'm patriotic. I said, well, night and day, I put four light application stimulate electromagnetic radiation. Light application stimulate electromagnetic radiation, my laser. Futuristic multipurpose coherent beam, absolute truth. That is my original work. It's number one in the world. Therefore, who am I? Now, as far as matching them orbiting a satellite, I said, give me 30 days. So, okay, I put 30 steps, one each day, 30 days. Now, the supervisor of the entire department I was working with, because he has me always as a nobody. He moved me around, so I was always beginning at the bottom, so to speak. Comes out to me, and he says, well, he invites me to his home, my wife and I, to elegant dinner. Said, yes, of course. So we had this elegant dinner, and everything's fine. And he said, well, uh, we have to listen to this national broadcast. Step by step, exactly what I said on the 30th day. Finally got a a successful launch orbit a satellite. Absolutely true. You understand who I really am? Now, I'm doing during the day maybe a half a dozen various disciplines issue, and at the same time, I'm analyzing Einstein's opinions. And I conferred with Lincoln Barnett. Lincoln Barnett wrote uh, Dr. Einstein, the universe in Dr. Einstein. And I said, are these his words? And he says, look, you've been asking me at least twice every time. He says, I'm telling you that he went over every page, every paragraph, every sentence, every word. Before I printed a word, I made sure it was just the way he wanted. It was his words. He says, every word there is his words. I says, thank you. So now, that's where I quote, where he says, you have to think irrationally. What a mathematical scheme to get the best answer. Now, I came to the conclusion that if you do it my way, you represent reality by real mathematical physics that represents reality. That's the best way. So I put forward a unified field theory that I think is valid. And all of my work I took and sent to the Pope because I could see that others, especially if they didn't, Uber didn't like, didn't come back or, or were murdered. Isn't that correct? And I can say it right now. There was um, um, a uh, relative of Hoover's proven by Millie McGee. You put in there Millie McGee. She proves she's a relative of Hoover. She's a... Um, a pass, sort of a pass for white girl that proves that Hoover is a pass for white and murdered his grandfather because his grandfather was going to say that Hoover was re related to him. And she shows the, the graves of Hoover in their family. Absolute true fact. I, I didn't want to get to that ethnic, but it looked to me like Hoover may be a pass for white. And that's what she proves. Then... He was the inside to have the vet village smashed. They got that info, and some of them were killed and, and injured. They wanted their World War I bonus. He gave them that. Then he covered up for the teapot dome scandals, how they got the job in the first place. They needed somebody to cover up for that. That's how he starts, cover up artist for a politician. And then it became uh, kind of known that he was a bend over for politicians, this Hoover. And there was uh, the, the representative that says, we got to get this immoral Hoover out. And he comes into Washington practicing his speech on a train. They're waiting for him. He doesn't get off the train. They found him on the train. He had dropped out. Quite a coincidence. So you look at these coincidences and try to get Hoover out. What happened? Then there's him try, holding me as 
uh, as, actually as a, a prisoner of his criminally insane operations so that nobody would know who I am and what I'm really achieving. Then there's, uh, I went to Washington, D.C. and said, look, he has experimented Americans to death. I can prove that. And talked to a lawyer, a top lawyer. And he said, I believe you and I know those facts. I know those who were, in fact, I know a couple of things where we can go at them legally. He said, we got to go at them legally that even you don't know. So he, we were going to start this on a Monday. We we're going to start that on a Friday. He said, I'll get all my work done. You come in on Friday afternoon. We can start it to, to go at them legally, serve them. On a Wednesday, knowing that who was always working faster, more vicious, I called to make sure he was okay and remind him we keep the appointment on Friday. Answered to sound like him, but it, said, who are you? He said, I'm his brother. He said, what happened? He said, I don't know. He said, uh, he, he suddenly dropped dead. Dropped dead? He says, yeah. As I talked to him Monday in person, he was fine and good spirits. He says, I talked to him yesterday. He was in fine health and good spirits. He says, but this morning on a Wednesday, he said he'd suddenly dropped dead. I had to rush back. He said, everything here is in a rushed confusion. I says, well, what's going on? He says, well, all he told me is they're going to bury him Friday. Friday at the end of the service. A heck of a rainstorm. It's going to be proven. Most of the notable Washingtonians were there. After everybody left in that rainstorm, I stood by his grave and said, someday I'm going to get this criminally insane murder as Hoover. And then he, I go to Bobby Kennedy's office as attorney general. I have to walk by Hoover's door to get there. Bobby made a mistake. He wouldn't talk to me. Then there's a, uh, instead of a, a young girl, like in her 20s, they had a girl, a lady about 60. I figured Hoover's substituting one of his well, who wants there? And she says, you can't see walk in this office anymore. I says, how could it be? This is legal office. He's attorney general. She says, that's my orders, and you cannot walk in here anymore. You're not allowed to walk in this attorney, uh, the attorney general's office anymore. So I got real angry, and I point right at her. I says, you're from Hoover's office, right? Answer, you're right. And she, she admitted, yeah. That's his orders. She says, yeah. Do you understand how Hoover worked? Now, I know they're going to kill Kennedy. I can tell you, I had 600 videos, 600. Dot the I's, cross and T's, all issues. Disappear. Can't get them. They say, send this form, send the form. They send the form back, refuse to accept it. No matter what I do. So I have to retape some of those. This is going to be an all-inclusive tape of all of them, say, who am I? This is who I really am, what I really achieved, and therefore who I really am. Now, Hoover was behind that, and then he was in charge of investigation. That's a joke. It was his ruling that it was the magic bullet. Then, as far as Martin Luther King, Martin Luther King knew about the past for white and was going to expose him, and I had a letter to send it to him. And I didn't have a stamp. I said, I'll send it in the morning. In the morning, I went to get, you get a stamp to mail it. I see in the headlines, Martin Luther King is shot. Quite a coincidence. Martin Luther King gets my information, and he has a chance maybe to expose Hoover. And I can get what legally by the Constitution is mine. Then there's Robert Kennedy. Nobody can tell me anything about Robert Kennedy. I use that expression. Unless you have me and Robert Kennedy that night, it's not complete and some kind of a cover-up story. I gave the important critical suggestion at his brain trust session, called the brain trust session on the ground floor of Ambassador Hotel with his brother-in-law, Steve Smith. And he said, I see all of these spontaneous unrehearsed without any notes. Why? I survived them. Absolutely true. Because they wanted, they couldn't figure out how Bobby could win because of McCarthy's scholarly expertise in a debate. And then they agreed with yours truly. So he did debate and he did win, like I predicted. Now all he's got to do is survive. So I figured I got to be careful. This over, he moves faster, more vicious. So I left Bobby and talked to him face to face, not once, twice. You stick to the itinerary. I don't know what they did. He wouldn't talk to me. He turned around and went back into the presidential suite, left me in the hall. I can prove it. Ethel Kennedy come by. Ethel Kennedy's still alive. 
She, she will remember because I introduced myself. Do you understand? Got a top expert witness. I suspected Hoover would kill him maybe that night. You stick to the itinerary. He goes in not opposite direction to a commercial kitchen. So he got cut down. White, oh, supposedly two guns, which a lot say in all those shots, because Hoover figured that naturally Bobby would let me join his group and get behind him instead of walk away from me. And he would have to get me before he get Bobby because I'd be right behind him, guarding him. Understand? Now, we have where there's... Uh, 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 Bush Sr., they make him the CIA director, my CIA, so to speak. And then they let Reagan get the vote, and then he shot, and he would take over as vice president, but he survived. So what they have is the secret police power click inside, and the president is the public yak yak man. That's the truth. Now, what I'm insisting is that I said it's so disgusting and boring, all this hype and hoopla, especially about Einstein. Now, I forgot about him after 1957. Xerox, life station, electromagnetic radiation, laser futuristic multiple beam, matching the orbiting satellite and step by step, like I said, etc. At, at six disciplines a, and a day plus studying my own mathematical physics, my unified field theory, which I think is valid. So I said, well, man's greatest challenge is the discipline of theology. How did we get here? Why are we here? What best to do? So that's my main interest and challenge. And I can't deny, I had a vision, and I, I actually, because of what all the life and death struggle, something we just forget, I can't deny. In my opinion, I've tried a million ways, I can't deny, and it might be I was a dream, but, and I said, well, I, that's my now main interest and challenges discipline of theology. So that's who I really am, what I have really achieved. And I insist, demand, 